Hello everyone. We're back with another Rings of Power review. Uh, sorry for the late review. As uh, normally when I do it, it was uh, Canadian Thanksgiving this past weekend. Uh, so I was not able to do it when I uh, originally wanted to. But that's okay. We are here now. So we will do... We only have two reviews left. We have this one and then... Uh, uh, we have the season finale uh, this week. So that would be pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, uh, I believe that this week's episode was... Well, I don't want to say total trash, but I, I don't know. It was pretty darn close to being trash, if I do say so myself. Hello, Game Jedi. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this episode was pretty bad, in my opinion. Especially for a season, or like, uh, it's been a few days since I've seen this. I forgot. That's okay. I'll, I'll remind you. Um, but yeah, like for essentially being the semi, uh, finale, basically, uh, I thought this episode was, well, was pretty bad. The horse. <laughs> The horse is on fire. Why? Well, yeah, like first off, um, well, as expected, but also like, what the heck? Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't care how cool you think you are, how powerful you think you are, but um, you don't just get to uh, survive a volcano explosion. That's not how. That's not how volcano explosions work. I just. As and as expected, every character that has a name, um, uh, which we call it, survives. Well, except Isildur's friend. Um, and then there was a. Uh, uh, there was um. Yeah, I guess that's it actually one of the Sildur's friends the one that wanted to go home after fighting one battle wanted to go relax or whatever he's sadly the one that uh that died other than that every other named character survives Gladriel wakes up and from being I don't know unconscious from the volcanic explosion and is just like meh uh Rather than helping anybody, a horse that's on fire, people on fire, people calling out for help, people aimlessly walking around this carnage, Galadriel ignores everybody uh, and decides to f take Theo and just leave? I don't understand. Galadriel, who's supposed to be here helping people and being supportive of everyone, convinced the Numenorians to come to Middle-earth to help the Southlanders uh, and fight Sauron, she just leaves them. She just flats out leaves. They're like, nah, I don't care. Um, and then uh, the Queen and Isildur are saving people from a burning building. The Queen gets burning ash in her face. And then to help build subs build suspense, because the show's kind of dull, uh, the uh, the burning building collapses on Isildur. Which, of course, we all know he survives, because it would be absolutely ridiculous if he did die, since he's supposed to die, you know, thousands of years later, or, well, I don't know, maybe hundreds of years later at this point? I don't know how the timeline works, but... Um, He's supposed to die years later to, um, whatchamacallit, uh, arrows in the back while he's fleeing with the ring. 
He's supposed to he's supposed to kill Sauron, so you know he can't uh he can't be dead yet. But Amazon wants to build suspense, cause guess what? We um Listen well, slug. I've got a job needs doing that um Spoiler alert the soldier lives exactly, yeah. Uh, they probably forgot about that. Like, they forgot about Kelleborn. Poor Kelleborn. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, wait. Is Silidor supposed to live? So next episode, because we still don't actually know. Uh, next episode, they'll, like, he'll randomly, like, come out of the, the ruined building. And, uh, um, walk away, uh... Like, nothing happened. Because, like, oops, we forgot he's supposed to live. Um, but yeah, speaking of Celeborn, he's around. Well, I mean, around, not around. He's missing. After seven episodes, Galadriel mentions to Theo that um, she has a husband, which all the lore people knew that she has a husband, but for whatever reason, it took Amazon seven episodes for Gladriel to mention this husband that she has. Um, which is odd. Um, now she thinks he's dead. Uh, but she technically phrases it as he wandered off to war and I never saw him again. So she thinks he's dead, but really he's probably just mi missing or is captured. Uh, but so that's, so we've got um, half justice for Celeborn, I guess. He's at least n mentioned by name. We still don't know if Galadriel's daughter is around yet. Amazon probably forgot about her too. Who knows? Uh, I wonder if they had like a thousand people write down story ideas, threw them in a hat, and pulled them out before they write each episode. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we can talk about Celeborn finally. Woohoo. Good job, Dave. Thanks for writing down that idea. Um, yeah, that's, that's essentially all that Galadriel does this episode is mention that she has a husband. Um, the Numenorians. uh, oh, I guess we find out that the queen's blind now. The queen's blind, which is really funny because so the queen is walking with and a captain and um, uh, Ellen Dill. And she's like, please don't mention anything. Uh, she's Cause she's, she's blind now. And she's like, don't tell anyone I'm blind. All right. I don't want anybody to know that I'm blind. What was the big to do about Isildur's horse though? Oh. Well, Isildur's horse is going to go save Isildur. That's why he was freaking out and panicking. Uh, so they let the horse go so that Isildur's horse can go save Isildur, just like the horse saved Aragorn in the Two Towers movie. The horse is freaking out and upset, so they calm down the, the horse, and then the horse is going to go save Isildur. But yeah, uh... The queen says, don't tell anyone that I'm blind. And then literally like the next scene you see her, she's got a blindfold on her face. <laughs> so she doesn't want to tell anybody that she's blind. But if you see that she has a blindfold on it, on her eyes, don't, don't question it. Don't worry about it. I don't know. Which I just, I thought that was extremely weird. Um... And I didn't understand, but oh well. Uh, just, you know, normal Amazon things. Um, they did another, like, uh, oh, is Bronwyn alive or dead thing again? They had to do it like three times, though. Well, I guess four times, because first it was she was shot from the from the previous episode, right? And it's like, oh, no. oh, is she going to die? But they saved her. And then in this episode, Theo's looking for her at this camp now. And um, 
Uh, they do like a... Oh, is that Bronwyn? No, that's not Bronwyn. Uh... Oh, is that Bronwyn? No, that's not Bronwyn. Um... So, uh, and then they finally reveal behind Theo that there's Bronwyn and everything's all okay now. Which I just thought was really funny. Um... I'm trying to think of... Else that the Numenorians do. I think that's really it, honestly. Um, oh, I guess they have. Just, just playing Marco Polo. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. Th I think that's it that the Numenorians do. Because they. Uh... Yeah. Um. Although, so Halbrand is, uh, is, is alive as, but he's got a, a giant like gash or wound in his stomach. So they let Galadriel know that he needs elvish medicine. Only elf medicine can save him. So what they do, so they need to get him elf medicine. And the only elf medicine that is apparently that is around is, um, in Linden, which here, actually, I'm going to show it on the map uh, just to show you how far this is. Because they put him on, they put Halbrand, who's injured, on a horse, right? They put him on a horse. And for whatever reason, with they think that's a good idea because... He's going to be on a horse for a very long time, bleeding out of his wound. <laughs> um, not going to bleed to death, I guess. Uh, here we go. Yeah, okay. So, they are... Whoopsies. That's not what I wanted to do. So they are essentially down here, all right? Down to the bottom right part of the map. Um, this is where this is where they are in the Southlands, and Linden is all the way. Uh, well, Linden's kind of like this area. Uh, the Grey Havens is the capital, so it's about right here. So Halbrand is gonna go on a horse. Um, bleeding from this wound from all the way from Mordor uh, all the way to Linden. It's literally like the other side of the map. Um, that's easily like a month's travel. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how Halbrand is supposed to survive. Except if is if he's actually Sauron, because if it, if Halbrand is actually Sauron, he wouldn't die. He's basically a demigod. That wound won't kill him. He'll be fine. So, I I don't know. He looks like death too, but he can walk and ride a horse. Yeah, exactly. He's sitting there dying. Looks like he's literally like a ghost, and uh, he's just on a horse, chilling. And he's totally fine. So they're, um, yeah, that's a long journey that they have to make. Uh, so we'll, s we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure nothing, but actually on that topic of, um, of Halbrand going on this journey, um, I'm pretty sure on the way there too, um, Galadriel's going to stop in Aragian and we're going to get, Calibri uh, Calibrimbor, who's working on the forge. I, I'm i convinced that we're going to get a... Hey, Halbrand, do you want to work on this forge with me? Because Halbrand likes working on forges, and he wants to forge things. And then he's going to mention... Um, 
you know, this, uh, weird, like, ring thing, and then, boom, revealed Halbrand Sauron. Uh, that's my predict. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen next episode. Um. Oh, uh, the, I think the only other th thing of note for the Numenorians, or I, even just the humans in general, Bronwyn, when I went back and watched it again, Bronwyn th had a quick line of a, of mentioning a Gondorian city. She mentioned the city, uh, Pelagir, which is down here so it's about right here on the map so Pelagir is a port city now it was built by the Numenorians. uh oh yes the mountain friend will emerge next episode and it will I'll get to that in a second. Um, so the Numenorians built this port city down here. Now, I, th I'm, what I'm th confused about is, one, the Numenorians said that they've never been to Middle Earth yet, earlier in the season. Two, if they've already been established in Middle Earth, why was it so hard convincing people to go to Middle Earth? And three, if the Southlanders needed help, why the heck did they not go to this whole Numenorian city that's like a two days away, a day away from where they were dealing with the orcs? I don't understand. She mentioned Pelagir and I got really confused. Um, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, there. Uh... And, but yeah, the Numenorians are heading back to Numenor, as you do, and after losing a battle, I guess. Uh, and that's kind of their story. Uh, so now the dwar now the better part of the episode, Elrond and the Dwarves. Elrond and the Dwarves have always been a fan favorite of people. Uh, always been a good time. Um. What I didn't like about them this episode, though, is they did this whole, like, essentially will they, won't they game of, like, hey, uh, Dwarf King, we need the Mithril. Dur Dwarf King's like, no, you can't have the Mithril. It's dangerous. Then Elrond goes to his friend Durn's, like, are you sure we can't have the the mithril? Durin's like, no. Elrond leaves. Durin sees that the mithril actually he physically heals the uh, a sick leaf from the tree by like placing it right next to each other. Or rock of mithril is beside the sick leaf, and the sick leaf fully heals by just being in proximity to the mithril. And then Durin's like, oh, Elrond, wait. We will dig no matter what. So then they go dig behind his father's back. And then the dad finds out that they're digging. So then he's like, get out. You're not digging. And then after that, they go back to Durin and Disa, who are talking about going to dig again. So it's, so the entire episode is just a will they, won't they dig. Um, but in addition to that, um, while they're digging everything, yes, and, and daddy... Daddy Durin or Daddy Dwarf um, disowned his son. So his son is now supposed to no longer be uh, king after his father's death, but uh, that's not going to matter because in the books, unless Amazon's going to change it, in the books, Durin the Fourth, I believe, is actually the last Durin. Uh, when the Belrog shows up. Uh, and speaking of the Belrog, we actually got to see the Belrog this episode, which was kind of, it had a kind of a funny um, introduction where the, uh, the Dwarf King 
is like plug plugging up the hole that Elrond and Durin dug, and he throws the leaf through this hole, and the leaf falls down a chasm, and you see like this dark, uh, dark figure just like chilling there, and then the leaf touches the ground and it burns, and then. It's revealed that it's the Belrog, and the Belrog's all pissed. And I just thought it was funny that, to me, it looked like that the Belrog was sleeping with his wings over his face, and then the leaf touches the ground, and the Belrog wakes up. He's like, what the heck is this leaf? I'm mad now. It's like the leaf is what woke him up from his, his sleep. I don't, I don't know if that's what Netflix intended or not, but that's what it looked like, and it was really funny. Um... I'm trying to think on oh Disa and Durin well or Disa got like really who brought the outdoors into my house exactly um Disa went full like I guess she channeled the true dwarf you know dwarves are are meant to be greedy and uh uh, stubborn and all that stuff and so because they're using the king is to play like this nice guy dwarf um, they're using Disa as like this weird uh, as the way to show greed I guess if that makes sense So that's, that's happening, um, which I don't know if I like or not, you know? Cause, um, uh, I feel like all the dwarves should be greedy, not just Disa. So I don't understand why they're using Disa as the way to... Oh, essentially wake up the Balrog in the future when it was all of the dwarves greed who did it as a, and it was kind of like poetic of like the dwarves greed and, and stubbornness and hunger for more is what led to their demise um uh so yeah I don't know I thought that was uh, I don't know how I feel about that, because I want the I want the dwarf king, and and Durin to kind of be the ones that like lead the dwarves to their demise, uh, by being so greedy, not Disa. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just holding on to the books too much, um, and Amazon's idea is better. I don't know. Um. Trying to think on if there was anything else big that happened. Not really. Uh, if I go over my notes, uh, no one, no one dies of the volcano. Celeborn's alive. Using a Silador is a weird suspense builder for the final episode. Um, uh, Halbrand is more likely Sauron because of being able to survive. Um, Belrog and Mord Oh yeah, Mordor. Uh, I don't, I didn't like it, but maybe some will. Um, but they... They did this really cheesy Mordor introduction with, uh, so the orcs are asking, or not the orcs, but the old man who betrayed the Southlanders asks Adar, uh, what are we going to call this land now? Because he's like, yay, the, the Southlands belong to the orcs now. And Adar's like, well, it shouldn't be called the Southlands because the Southlands don't exist anymore. Look at it. Look at it around us. And 
the old guy's like, oh, what do we call it? And rather than just answering it or just letting the audience, like, we all know it's Mordor at this point. Like, there's a volcano and the whole area just exploded and is on fire. We all know it's Mordor. Um, but they decided to have, like, the, the word Southlands appear on screen and then it dissolve and turn into the word Mordor, which I didn't really like. I thought it was really cheesy, but, um... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it could have, like, we, it was kind of like the, well, no shit, Sherlock, of course it's Mordor. What else it's going to be called? But I don't know, maybe people who don't know the world and stuff as much enjoyed it. Um, I think there could have been a more clever way to go about it. Like, maybe the camera pans out of the map and then, like, the map burns and then it turns into Mordor or something like that. I don't know. That would have been clever. Um, so we got Mordor. Uh, um, and then Mordor. Harfoots. Oh, yes, the Harfoots. The Harfoots are still annoying. Right. So, and they got what they deserve. <laughs> That's Those are the notes I made. Hobbits or the Harfoots finally got what they deserve. So, the Hobbits get to their, um, I guess their resting place for this so-called travel. Um, however, all, well, not all the trees. The trees that they use for food, there's like three, there's there's apple trees that they eat from. Now there's three, ap three or four apple trees that are burnt down because they're really, they're close to Mordor. And when the volcano blew up, it sent, like, asteroids or whatever into outside of Mordor, and it hit a couple trees. So the trees burnt down. Um, and the hobbits are really upset about this, which is fine, except if you look behind the hobbits, there's all of these trees behind them. Like, yes, there's the three trees that are burnt down. But behind those burnt trees is a whole other set of trees that are totally fine. So your what is your does your food only come from these three specific apple trees or whatever? That seems hard to believe. But I don't know. Maybe they're fancy apple trees. Um. But yeah, so the the trees are burnt down, and then. Gandalf, not Gan, or they ask Gandalf, not Gandalf, to to fix the trees or to heal them, even though in the last episode they hated him. Um, they hated him because he's because he's an outsider. Uh, they think his magic is dangerous. Um, but they're like, no, 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 help us, help us, help us. So he. Gandalf, not Gandalf, starts performing magic on the tree. He's performing a spell. The tree cracks. Then the main hobbit girl, Nori, her sister, walks underneath a tree branch, and the tree branch almost fall, falls on her and kills her. It wouldn't have killed her, but that's okay. Um, almost kills her. So then they all get pissed at Gandalf, not Gandalf again, and tell him to leave and go away. Don't come back. Uh, cause we're mad at you. Um, and you're too dangerous to be here. So then they send him away again. Then after that, um, the, the three, I'll just call them the cultists. The, f f you know, the female m, &M. <laughs> Uh, and her, and her two companions, the, the cultist ladies, show up. They still have, they still don't talk. We still don't really know what they're doing. But they go to the tree that Gandalf, not Gandalf, touched. They pick a flower off of it so that you, so you know that. Oh well, he's he is actually he did heal the tree. Okay. And then they just like look off into the distance and they start walking. And then, I don't know if it was to save him or misdirect the cultist but nori says no 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 he went that way um and then uh uh 
everyone's disturbed because Nora's shouting. Uh, so all the other Harfoots wake up and they gather around. Nori's dad holds up a torch. He's like, get out of here. You don't belong here. Uh, and then the main cultist lady, like, absorbs the fire from the torch. And then blows the fire around and sets all the, all the carts on fire. Which is probably my favorite part of the episode. Because the Harfoots finally got what they deserved. They leap, they preach about um, nobody getting, uh, no one being left behind, no one walks alone, but we'll take your cart wheels, we'll abandon you the first chance we get. We hate Gandalf, but we sent him away because we think he's dangerous. So now they can't go anywhere because their carts are on fire. And I thought that was justice and I loved it a lot. <laughs> um, and then the cultists just walk away. That's it. They set everything on fire and walk away. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I think that was it for the Harfoots as well. I'm trying to remember. You lose everything. The cultists walk away. Um. Hmm. Um. I think that's it. Let me check my notes again. I got dwarves fighting. Right Hold on. Uh, I'll sit here and think about it. I wish we knew about the cultists. I wish we knew more about the cultists. I don't understand them. Like, yes, they're chasing after Gandalf, but like, why? We don't know. Who are they? We don't know. We don't even know their names. They don't talk to each other. They just motion to each other and speak, or and, and nod and motion and like do hand signals or whatever. Um. Uh, okay, final predictions. Um, Halbrand's still Sauron, in my opinion. Gandalf, not Gandalf, is still Gandalf. Or, I'll ex I think there's a chance that he could be Radagast. And the only reason why I say that is because where the Harfoots are located, and some and a line that they said in the in the, sh the last episode is the main Hobbit leader. Uh, says that they're near he says to the oh I forgot about that part okay uh, so before predictions um, so the, the Gandalf is looking for a specific uh, constellation like a set of stars right uh, we learned that pretty early on however um, when he first went to the Hobbit camp he looked for a certain constellation and uh, it was uh, it was burnt, uh, or like he accidentally set it on fire. Or whatever. So I'm confused. So then later, the Hobbit leader dude is like, "Go to Greenwood the Great, um, which is a big forest," and. Uh, uh, go take this map and go find the constellation. Except, how does he have the map to give to Gandalf if it was already burned? So I don't understand where this second map of the constellations came from. Uh, I thought that was a little weird. Um, and then, yes, I... Another reason why the hot, the Harfoots are just annoying is so after they send the cultists away and they lose their cabins, they're like, let's go. We should go help Gandalf because he's in trouble, even though they just sent him away. So now there's a group of them. Nori, Nori's friend, um, Nori's mother and the leader Hobbit, the Hobbit mayor, essentially. Um, they're all going to... They're all trying to find Gandalf. 
Uh, and I'm gonna go help. Maybe. In theory. Who knows? Um. Yeah, I think. Now I think that's it. Uh, so yeah, predictions. Albrand is still Gand is still Sauron in my opinion. The Gandalf, not Gandalf, could be Radagast because of the mention of Greenwood the Great. Greenwood the Great uh, later turns into Mirkwood. Radagast the Brown lives in Mirkwood. And Radagast is more connected to nature than any of the other mayors. Um... The mayors, the the Myers, the, the wizards. Um, so, because he's good at healing trees, and also the way he like says spells, kind of reminded me of Radagast from The Hobbit a bit. Um, but I don't know. So I think there's a chance that he's Radagast, but I still think he's Gandalf. Um, I don't think we're going to get any mentions of the Rings of Power this season, which is kind of funny considering the show is literally called the Rings of Power. Um, we might get the Belrog again, but I almost think that they're going to use the Belrog as a season two tease of like, I, I guarantee the last episode that comes out in two days is going to be like, it's going to end with the Balrog, like, essentially kicking down a wall. And if they have the Balrog, it'll be him kicking down the wall. The dwarves panic, and then they cut it there. Um, that's my predictions on that uh, for the Balrog. Uh... I don't... I think that's it. Um, nothing else really happened. Which is, again, really sad for a... semi-finale. Uh, you know, the second to last episode of the of, the, of season one. There, it didn't lead into anything. There's nothing that's, like, going to... There's not, like, a big battle that we're leading up to or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, you're still enjoying it for the most part? Well, good! I'm glad, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, I wish I could enjoy it more. But a lot of the, not just the lore-related things, but the, some of the, just the writing overall drives me insane. Um... But yeah, is there any more... Thoughts or uh, questions on the last episode? You're able to fill in some of the blanks. Exactly. <laughs> That's, yep, I'm able to fill in those blanks. Uh, glad I can help somewhere there. Uh, on. I'll. I, you know, I'm. I sit here and I'm like, do will I even watch season two at this point? I don't know. Like I, pr I probably will, even though I think I won't. I probably still do. I'll still do it anyways. Um, but it's still. It's season two is like two plus years away still. So, I feel like everyone's gonna forget about it anyways. Uh. Yes, you'll watch these two because you feel things. To discuss this, but I'm gonna head to bed. Sure, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I don't. I think, really, I think the discussion's over now. Uh, I don't have anything else to review. Uh, I explained everything that happened, which was nothing because nothing happened. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll just uh, call it here. So I thank you all for stopping by and joining on this late review of episode seven. I, I am currently planning to do the season finale review on Saturday uh, still, uh, but I'll keep everyone posted on that. Uh, yeah, you're always, if anyone has more questions, drop it in the comments or there's always the discord as well. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.